Have you ever wondered whether electric cars are truly better for the environment than their gas-powered counterparts? As we shift towards renewable energy sources, the demand for minerals and materials required for electric vehicles is increasing rapidly. While it's true that electric car batteries require more mining than traditional vehicles, the overall impact on the environment is still significantly lower. In this video, we'll explore why electric cars are the cleaner and greener option for the future. So, let's dive in. Even when considering the emissions related to the production of their batteries, electric vehicles are typically cleaner than gas-powered cars throughout their lifetime. Driving an electric vehicle produces no emissions, whereas a gas-powered vehicle produces harmful pollutants such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and particulates. Several health issues including asthma, heart disease, and early mortality have been connected to these emissions. While it is true that the mining of elements like lithium, cobalt, and nickel is increased in the production of EV batteries, the emissions related to this mining are often lower than the emissions related to the extraction and refinement of fossil fuels. Also, the environmental effect of battery manufacture will keep declining as battery technology develops and more recycling initiatives are implemented. When comparing the greenhouse gas emissions of electric vehicles with internal combustion engines throughout their lives, EVs can release around one-fourth as much carbon dioxide as their gas-powered counterparts. The direct emissions from using an internal combustion engine vehicle throughout its lifespan much outweigh the overall life cycle emissions of an EV. Even though mining the material inputs needed for an EV battery and the process of creating it produces more carbon dioxide. Quartz produced these estimates with assistance from Alke Hoekstra, Senior Advisor on Smart Mobility at the Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, using information from the EPA and the International Energy Agency. While there is no denying that EVs have lower emissions than gas-powered vehicles, it is also true that the growing demand for EVs and batteries will necessitate a significant increase in mining, with the associated environmental disruptions and waste. Developing and implementing new mining and processing techniques will be crucial to reduce mining waste and toxicity, as researchers from Australia's University of Queensland recently noted in a journal paper. Over the next 30 years, the researchers predict that waste produced by mining copper, nickel, manganese and lithium will amount to nearly 1 trillion tonnes. Yet, there are ways to significantly reduce this waste, which include tailings, byproducts produced after the target mineral is extracted, and waste rock from mining and excavation. The researchers suggested several different extraction techniques. One entails processing waste rock and tailings to recover any remaining precious minerals. To lessen the toxicity of tailings, a method called environmental desulfurization separates sulfide minerals. It is already a well-known technique to reuse leftovers from one mining operation to save costs in another mining process. For instance, China's state-owned Baotu Steel mines rare earth metal containing iron ore and then supplies the essential metals to its rare earth subsidiary. Similarly, a US-EU supply chain for rare earth uses monazite sands left over after mining heavy minerals for zirconium and titanium. Another significant worry is the huge human cost incurred by mining ventures in some nations. For instance, the cobalt mining sector in the Democratic Republic of the Congo has been connected to worker exploitation, child labor, and other human rights violations. Also, there are signs of forced labor in the Chinese EV battery supply network. The Chinese Communist Party is allegedly pursuing a systematic campaign of human rights abuses against the Uyghur ethnic minority in the northwest province of Xinjiang, where a company backed by the Chinese battery giant CATL recently won a bid for exploration rights to a lithium mine. Yet, although many fully electric cars sport zero emissions badges, this claim is not entirely accurate. Although battery electric automobiles don't produce greenhouse gases when they drive, the manufacturing and charging of the vehicles do produce some pollutants. The production of the massive lithium-ion batteries used in EVs is one source of pollutants. Minerals like lithium, cobalt, and nickel, essential for current EV batteries, must be mined and heated to high temperatures using fossil fuels. As a result, between 2.5 and 16 metric tons of CO2 are produced while constructing the 80 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery contained in a Tesla Model 3. 
Building a new EV can result in approximately 80% higher emissions than creating a similar gas-powered car due to the extensive battery production process. Yet, most emissions from today's EVs occur after they leave the factory, much like gasoline-powered vehicles. The energy used to charge EV batteries is the main cause of emissions. These emissions can vary greatly depending on where the car is driven and the type of energy used there. The ideal situation is in Norway, the largest EV market in Europe. The country gets most of its energy from hydropower, which gives all those EVs a small carbon footprint. The emissions figures for EVs don't seem as good in nations where polluting coal is the main source of electricity, but they're still on par with or better than burning gasoline. We must examine MIT's 2019 Insights into Future Mobility report to show how EVs emit fewer emissions than conventional equivalents. The Toyota Camry and Honda Clarity were examined in this study in their gasoline, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, battery electric, and hydrogen fuel cell variants. The research discovered that gasoline cars release more than 350 grams of carbon dioxide every mile traveled throughout their lifespan. The entirely battery electric vehicle produced only 200 grams of CO2 per mile, compared to about 260 grams for the hybrid and plug-in hybrid variants. The US Department of Energy statistics reveals a similar pattern. The DOE discovered that EVs produce 3,932 pounds of CO2 equivalent annually, compared to 5,772 pounds for plug-in hybrids, 6,258 pounds for conventional hybrids, and 11,435 pounds for gasoline vehicles, using the nationwide average of various energy sources. The study from MIT demonstrates how these statistics change significantly depending on a few crucial variables. For instance, the researchers discovered that a completely electric vehicle emitted around 25% less carbon than a comparable hybrid car when they used the average carbon intensity of America's power grid. But they discovered that the EV would produce 61% less carbon than the hybrid if they conducted the calculations thinking it would recharge in Washington state, which relies heavily on hydropower. The EV produced higher carbon emissions than the hybrid when calculations were made for West Virginia, a coal-dependent state, but still less than a gasoline-powered vehicle. It would be detrimental to electric vehicle sales if they were to outlive gas vehicles, as there would be fewer kilometers driven without emitting any emissions, which would offset the carbon-intensive production of their batteries. But when the MIT study calculated a comparison in which EVs only had a 180,000-mile driving range instead of 90,000, they still outperformed hybrids by 15% and gas cars by a wide margin. While internal combustion engines are becoming more efficient, EVs are on track to become significantly cleaner as more nations incorporate clean energy into their energy mix. According to MIT, the CO2 emissions from gasoline cars will decrease from more than 350 grams per mile to roughly 225 grams by 2050. Battery EVs might, however, weigh as little as 125 grams during that time, and even as little as 50 grams if the cost of renewable energy significantly decreases. Elon Musk's electric car company Tesla has been content with lofty highs and low lows ever since its IPO in 2010. Despite all the ups and downs, Tesla was able to popularize electric vehicles and become the most valuable automotive company in the world. In this video, we'll show you the company's most significant moments since 2008 up till now. Go check it out!